We will start the Siyum and Sikhit Berachot, the first Masikhtot of the cycle of Daf Yumi. Is that Shem? Amar Bidivi Berachia. You see, in Bitta Kinet, in the class of Bitta Midrash, you are sick with Torah. Zuchayim Kabir, Pine Shekhina. The one, the person that would leave Bitta Kinet from when he prays to Bitta Midrash to go and learn Torah. We are sick with Torah, and he goes to learn. Zuchayim Kabir, Pine Shekhina. He is okay to see the Shekhina upon him. Shine Amar, Yelechu Mehail El Hail. They will go from altitude, multitude to a multitude, and they will see the Shekhinah in Sion. The Malbim says another Midrash on it, that these uh, people that would go from place to, from the place they pray, but they to the place that they learn, they will strengthen themselves, and they'll go high, so high in Kedushah, that they will be able to see the Shekhinah in their learnings. Amar Bihiyah, Bar Asheh, Amar Rab, the Hachamim, they will continue to work hard. In our Lamaze, in our Lamaba. Shine Amar, the Hum Mahail, the Hail, the Rail Elohim Sion. He means Mahail, Hail, that means our Lamaze, in our Lamaba. Amar Bilazar, Amar Bihanina, the Bidah Hachamim will be Shalom Baulam. Amar Bilazar, the Bidah Hachamim, they bring in more peace to the world. Shine Amar, the Hurben Aik, the Mudir Amunai. It says that the Diyah HaKhamim, they bring more peace to the world. And don't call them your kids, call them your builders. They build your, your communities. They build your, your nation. They bring a lot of peace to the world, and they, they will never fail. There should be peace in your domain. For my brothers and my friends. I'll talk peace about you. Hashem, Amen. Hashem will bring strength to his nation. Hashem should bless his nation with peace. Okay. Hashem will bring strength to his nation. Hashem should bless his nation with peace. Amen. Amen. So I want to say a few, you know, uh, small midrash on the Chavod of Simon's Merachot. It says in the Daf right before the Siyum today, it says in Daf Samer Kimal, Amar Ashtakish, Minayin Shayid Ibrahim Torah Metayimin, Ela Bimish Bimit Asmo Aleha. How do I learn that the Ibrahim Torah Ela Metayimin? That means if somebody wants to learn Torah and he wants to be Metayimit in him, in his family, in his kids, what, what does he have to do? Shemimit Asmo Aleha. He has to die to learn Torah. He has to die for the Ibrahim Torah. Shinei Amar, Zot HaTorah, Adam Kiyamut Ba'ohel. That's the Torah. A person, he dies in the Ohel. What's the Ohel? We learn that Ohel means, we said that Akum Abinu, Ishtam Yoshev, So when he says Ohel, he means learning Torah. So Zot Torah Adam Kiyamut Ba Ohel. A person wants to be Mikhaim Torah in, his, in himself, in his family, in his kids, for, for generations. He has to be willing to die for it. He has to be dying from learning. So we also learn in the Afkaf, in the same Berakha, in the same Masikhat in Berakhot, there was a question about Rav Papa. Amar Lira Papa Le Abayya. Ma shina rishonim de tahish lehu nissa? Ma shina annan de lam tahish lehu nissa? What's the difference from the old generations when the rishonim, they used to go and to pray, they will, the miracles would happen right on the spot. So, what we're saying, Rabbi Huda, they used to come to him to pray for the rain. And when he stands for the Amida, he takes the first shoe off. Before he takes the second shoe off, the rain is already pouring down. So why was the old Rishonim, when they used to pray, Hashem used to make the miracle right on the spot? Well, we now don't see that. When we try to pray and, and learn, and the does, miracle doesn't happen so quickly. So what's the difference? And he answers him, he says, the old generations, the old Rishonim, they used to have Mesirut Nefesh. Their Mesirut Nefesh, what really, really, what Hashem is really looking for. If we have Mesirut Nefesh like the old Rishonim, Hashem will make miracles for us today the same way like, like it, has, it happened before. <coughs> so really, all what Hashem wants from us, what does Hashem really, really want from us? Hashem really wants our Mesut Nefesh. We know that everybody have a busy daily life. We know that, you know, coming to learn every day is, is, is a hard job. But we know that's really, really what Hashem wants. Your life is busy every day. You have to make time to learn every day. And it should be a Mesut Nefesh. Everybody is busy with their life. Everybody is busy with their kids and their businesses. How does it work? We learn from the Abut. 
We said the Avot, what was the highest thing that Abraham Abinu did in his life? What was the highest Nisayim for him? Was the Akidat Ishaq. When he put his son on the, on the, on the Mizbeach to slaughter his son. That was the highest Mesut Nefesh that he did. And from that, we still reaping the, 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 the Pirot out of that. We pray, we say, Aisha Aleyah Sot, on the Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah, to say, to remember the Shut of Abraham Avinu, the Mesut Nefesh that he did to put his son, his son on the Mizbeach. And then we learn Ishaq Avinu. What's the highest act that Ishaq Avinu did? Was also being on the Mizbeach, to put himself on the line, his life on the line, to do what Hashem really, really wanted. Mm-hmm. We also learn how Yaakov Avinu. We said that Yaakov Avinu was all about learning Torah. We said when, when he actually left his father's house to go to Lavan, and he was in Shem Ibad for 14 years, and then they, when, when he was on the way, it says, It says, over there, when he went, he hit the place of Beit HaMikdash, he went to sleep over there, because for 14 years, he never slept. He was always learning Torah, and he never slept. And then we learn in Moshe Rabbeinu, what was the highest act that Moshe Rabbeinu did? It says in the Torah, Moshe grew and he went to his brothers and he saw their sufferings and he went to the mystery and he killed the mystery. Moshe could have just walked away and say, That's I can't I can't fix that problem. It's not my problem. He went and he took an action and he put himself on the line and he became a fugitive and he had to run to Midian. So he also put himself on the line, and then when Hashem saw that, he said, That's the man I'm looking for. That's the man that's going to be rewarded by taking Am Yisrael from Mitzrayim. Because we know very few things that Moshe did, Rabbeinu did. And that was the act that made Hashem decide that this is the man I'm looking for to get Am Yisrael out of Mitzrayim. And then we see, continue in our history. We even learn now in, in, in Mordechai. Mordechai, now we, we're in the week of Purim. We, we talk about Mordechai. We say, the Midrash says that Mordechai maybe wasn't the, the biggest Sadiq of the generation. Why was Mordechai was the one to be Zuchayt for us to read him and to be part of our It's because what he did, that he put himself on the line, and it says everybody has to bow down to Haman. He says he was now bowing down to Haman, and they, and they, and they told Haman, and he says, why? They said, ki, 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 ki because he was Jewish. He did not want to bow down. And he put himself on the line. He could just do, do like everybody else and bow down. He never wanted to be out there because he was Jewish. And then he was rewarded. And then we see that in Esther also. Esther could have also been nobody if she never, never made that act where she actually went into the Hashverosh. And she said that anybody that would go into a Hashverosh's room without a permission, he'd be ready, he'd be, he'd be killed. And she still did that. And she put her, herself on the line. And she did her Mesut Nefesh. And from that, she became Esther Amalka. So today, Haman, today we read, we read about Mordechai and Esther. Well, so that's all the Bishrut image that they did. They are rewarded by being in our Torah today that we run about forever. So we, we also read, continue in, in, our, in our history. We see Rabbi Akiva, how he left his house. He left his wife and his home for 24 years, 12 plus 12 after that, for 24 years to go and learn Torah and to become who Rabbi Akiva is today for all of us. We say all the Tanaim when they talk, Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Huda, everybody else, when they talk, they talk Alibad Rabbi Akiva. We say that everything is coming from Rabbi, from Rabbi Akiva. We also learn, keep, keep going down, we, we can even see this in our generation, how we see Ham Abdiyah Yosef, how much he did in his life to go and spend the Torah around the world, where he goes actually in, in, in the old days in Israel, he used to drive around with somebody to, from, from village to village, Halunim and not Halunim, to go and spend the Torah around the world, and around Israel, and build Yeshivot all, all over the place to spread the Torah around the world. We see the Mesut Nefesh that they did for us to be here today. I can even talk for our generation today with our rabbi. We see our Hacham Leon that taught many of us here today. We know, we all maybe know his Mesut Nefesh, how much he worked and how much he put in for us to be where we are today. He used to have a full-time job. We would wake up four or five o'clock in the morning to, to, to learn, to prepare, to teach, and go to work for a full day and come back to prepare and teach every day and every night. He would never miss a day. He would be 365 days a year teaching us, putting us where we are. That's the Mesut Nefesh that we need to learn. We really have no excuse if we're busy people, if we if we're have a job, if we have a family with a lot of kids, as Hashem, and 
there's no reason that we could say, there's not one excuse we could say, I can't learn today. It should be part of our life every day. It just, really, this is really what Hashem wants. Commitment. The commitment that we have, and the commitment that we have. It, if it's not that for me, I mean, I think everybody knows about that for me, but it should be part of everybody's life. If it's not that for me, it's something else that you need, you need to learn in Torah. But it should be part of your daily life. You should never leave to work every day in the morning before going to, going to pray and going to learn every day. You should never come back home every night before going to pray and learn again. It should be how you start your day. It should be how you end your day. But that should be all the okay to, to be learning. And to, Amen. 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 <laughs>